channel. Today we're going to talk about calling PowerShell from Power Automate using Win Automation. And in this particular scenario, we're going to go ahead and we're going to create a user by using PowerShell. So with that said, let's get right into the content. Let's go and check this out. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about why this episode is important. So first off, command line interfaces need automation too. Actually, this is a very popular use case is using the CLI, whether that's PowerShell or some sort of Unix shell, you still need to automate these. And in some cases you may not have access to an underlying API, but you do have access to the CLI, which makes it a great candidate for RPA. And that's just the reality of not everything is surfaced through a connector. We do have Azure Active Directory, and that's great for when you want to manipulate objects in the cloud, but you still have the need for local Active Directory connections and being able to manipulate data in the local directory itself, because you can't actually use those connectors that are available right now. Because oftentimes what still happens is that an organization will have their local Active Directory instance, and they will then replicate that data over to Azure Active Directory. I've yet to see many organizations that do the opposite, where they start with Azure AD and then sync locally. And as a result, being able to use PowerShell and to go ahead and manipulate objects inside of Active Directory is actually really important. Now, one thing I want to call out, when it comes to using RPA and PowerShell, one of the capabilities in Win Automation that we can take advantage of is that there is a PowerShell action which will allow us to go ahead and run a PowerShell script. We also have the ability to retrieve data or outputs from that script, which is another part of this particular video today. Now, in addition, we're also going to explore how can we go ahead and return data from Power Automate. There's a few ways to go ahead and do it. In this case, I'm going to return a file that we're going to be able to pick up from a Power Automate flow and take advantage of the existing gateway connection that already exists. And I'm also going to show you just some very simple string manipulation capabilities that are available as part of Win Automation as well. Now, if you haven't seen the previous video, so episode 33, where I show you how to call Win Automation from Power Automate, I do encourage you to go check that out. I'm not going to go into a ton of those details because I already covered it in a previous video. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the PowerShell script action that's available inside of Win Automation. And so what we can see here is number one, we're able to pass in parameters. So here, when we go ahead and create a new user, we can go ahead and pass in that parameter. We can pass in username and the full name, etc. So this makes our script extensible and it makes a great candidate to be plugged in to Power Automate itself. We know we can pass input parameters into a win automation process. And that's exactly what we're going to do here. The other thing I want to call out is that we do have access to outputs. Now these are going to get it stored into variables. And so we can go ahead and then leverage these variables, for example, to see if there's an error. And that might be information that we want to return back to Power Automate, which is orchestrating our overall process as well. So we're going to actually take advantage of these variables. And in this case, the output error is actually a list. And so we're going to go ahead and break that list apart and really go after the first line of that list because that's where we get the core of our information. So this is actually a pretty cool action that is available and definitely helps us with orchestrating our PowerShell automations. Let's talk just a little bit about the scenario itself. So I'm a hiring manager. I need to go ahead and onboard a new contractor. I can go ahead and make a request through Power Virtual Agents, our chatbot service that exists inside of the Power Platform. Now, as part of this, we're going to go ahead and expose a Power Automate flow using Power Virtual Agent triggers. And then what we can do is go ahead and automate a process, a UI process, by calling a UI flow. Now, as part of that UI flow process, we can go ahead and call the Win Automation action. Now, in this case, this process is going to run on a VM. In my scenario, it happens to run in Azure, but it could really run anywhere. It doesn't really matter. But we're going to use the on-premise data gateway in order to go ahead and kick off that Win Automation process, which is going to manipulate our local directory. Now, in this case, I'm just using the local directory on a machine. But if I had a domain controller installed, I could just as easily go ahead and call Active Directory and that domain itself to manipulate those objects. But the patterns remains the same. 
Now, one thing that we're gonna to have to deal with is that Win Automation can't directly return outputs back to Power Automate. So in the case of our chatbot, we need to know whether or not that user was created successfully, or if it wasn't created, like this person, hiring manager who's just chilling out on his desk, he needs to know if this was successful or not. So this is where we're gonna take advantage of using the file connector. Win Automation will go ahead and write the output to a file to, to a file folder. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead, right after we see that our process was called, we're gonna then be able to go ahead and, and scoop up that file, parse it and see what the status was. And then we'll be able to go ahead and return a result over to Power Virtual Agents. So I'm not gonna go into a whole lot of detail around Power Virtual Agents. I will leave you a link in the description where I have gone out and built out a ServiceNow service desk bot. And we're gonna leverage that existing bot to go ahead and perform these functionalities. Now, at the end of the day, the benefit really is for both. The hiring manager can go ahead and do self-service and see that an account is created in near real time for them. But we also have an IT pro who is no longer manually going in and creating a new user. Uh, this is now automated for them and they can focus on on tasks that require more creativity and not just the mechanical, you know, running a specific command. Okay, so we're gonna run the demo and then I will show you the solution itself. And here I'm just using Chatbot as a, a user interface to go ahead and to interact with the automated process that I want to go ahead and execute. This could also be a Power App. This could be a SharePoint list, but I think the conversational nature of a Chatbot is pretty cool. So in this case, I'm gonna wake up my Chatbot and I'm just gonna provide a command of create user. I do need to log in since I have enabled authentication for the specific chatbot. Uh, this is the experience when I'm running it in the dev console. In other clients where you've got direct SSO, you don't have to go to that web page. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna manage users. And now because I've said I wanna create a user, it's gonna now prompt me for what is the user's first name. So let's pick on my buddy, John, and let's put his last name, Levesque. And just as a bit of a spoiler, uh, we saw that when it comes time to, uh, to manage users, we have a couple options. We're gonna create users or disable users, and disable users will be the topic of an upcoming video. So that, that'll be part two of this series. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and we are going to create John's account. So at this point, we're gonna go ahead and kick off and we should see our win automation process. There we go in the bottom right-hand corner where it is now executing our process. And let's just minimize this and head back to our chatbot. And we should see here that our username is returned back from our chatbot experience. And there we go, we can see that our user has successfully been created. And in this case, the username is J.O. Levesque. All right, so that's uh, successfully created the user. Now let's dive into the demo itself. So when we talk about Power Virtual Agents, we can go ahead and reach out to Power Automate Flows. And in this case, what we are doing is we're gonna go ahead and call this flow. We pass in a first name, a last name, and what we do get is some outputs. Uh, we're gonna see if it was respond, if, it, if the, res the process was successful or not. And if so, we will get a username. If not, we'll go ahead and get an error message and display that back to the end user. Okay, so here's our Power Automate flow. I have a variable just for status. And then what I'm gonna go ahead and do is go ahead and construct a username just by doing some string manipulation. I'm also gonna construct a random password as well. I'm then gonna go ahead and kick off a, a UI flow for desktop and include this information. And then what'll happen is we'll go ahead and kick off our process. Now our process is gonna be in the form of a UI flow. So as part of the configuration here, I'm gonna go ahead and call the UI flow called service desk create user which is this specific UI flow. Now this is pretty simple. Uh, it is gonna be a desktop type, but we don't have the recorder. We're not recording anything. What we are doing is we're gonna go ahead and call the win automation action, which is in preview, and we're gonna go ahead and call this specific process path. Now, do refer to the video I provided previously. 
Uh, I explain this in more detail. So this will go ahead and kick off this process, which in this case is gonna go ahead and provide the following steps. So number one, we are going to retrieve command line arguments. And so this is going to be stored in an array. And then what we can do is we can pick off one by one and store them into their own variable. So here we're gonna take username, which is going to be the first argument of our command line sequence. Now in this case, it's zero based, so that's why we have zero represents the first parameter. Then we're gonna go ahead and do something similar for password and for display name. I also have some variables here for calling the file extension. As I mentioned, we're gonna go ahead and output a file. And so what I'm gonna do is set a variable here that just stores my extension and then I'm gonna have a base folder. So C demo output. And then I'm going to basically have another variable that just concatenates all of these. Now you could probably reduce the steps here, but I just wanted to break it out just for simplicity. Now here's the meat of, of what we're trying to achieve here. This is our PowerShell script action. And what we're doing in the first line is we're gonna go ahead and read in the password as a secure password or a secure string. And so that's what we're doing here. And then our next step is we're gonna go ahead and use the new local user command, and we're gonna pass in the username, the password, and the full name. Now what's gonna happen is when we execute this, we're gonna have a couple variables. And the when it's successful, we're, we can have data that is stored in our PowerShell output variable. Otherwise, we'll have error information that's stored to our PowerShell output error variable. Now what we can do is we can go ahead and run an if statement or a condition. And so what's happening here is if the PowerShell output error is not empty, so that means that we have an error, what we're gonna go ahead and do is we are gonna go and do some just replacement, some replace text. So what will happen is quotes will be returned in this error itself. And we just wanna replace them with dashes, they don't provide a whole lot of value, but they can mess up our JSON parsing. So that's our, our, first string our first string manipulation that we're gonna perform. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna take this output error list and we want to go ahead and delimit it by the new lines. So we wanna break it apart. Like this is a string that is gonna actually have several lines of text and we want to be able to break them apart so that we can access them individually. And in this case, most of the details is found in the very first line. And so that's what we want to do is just go after the first line of text because we're not going to spit out an overly technical error back to our end user. Then what we can do is write this data to a file. And this is where we're using that output file path. And we're going to just create a JSON file. So we've got the status as error. And then we've got this output attribute, which is gonna include the first line of errors. And then we will overwrite existing content if it exists. Now that deals with the error condition. In the event that we have a successful execution, we are gonna go down to else. Now what we're doing here is we are just gonna go ahead and separate the PowerShell. Now, same sort of thing. In this particular case, when we create a new user, we see multiple lines of text. I'm not really interested in like the subsequent lines beyond the first line itself. The first line is gonna contain our user and that's what we're after. So we wanna know what the actual username is and know that it was successful. So we're gonna go after the first line itself and then we're gonna write that first line, or sorry, in this case, it happens to be our fourth line. The fourth line con contains the username. So we're gonna go ahead and pull that value out itself. And we're gonna include that in our text and in this case, we're gonna go ahead and set our status equal to success. And then that's it. We're going to complete our process at this point in time. Now, when we talk about the file itself, here's the file that we would have used for John. Uh, so here we can see that the status was success and that John's username was created successfully. And this true flag indicates that it is currently enabled. Now we could go ahead and clean this up a little bit further, but for the purposes of this demo, uh, doesn't, uh, doesn't have any real impact. So this file is gonna be written to disk. And then what's gonna happen is that back in our Power Automate flow, what, what's gonna happen is it will wait for this process to complete, whether that's successful or whether that's failed. 
Now, what we'll do is if in the event it's successful, because we're gonna have our configure run after settings, it will go ahead and then retrieve the content from this file. And what we're doing is we're using the username to go ahead and pick the file up. So that's how we're matching the two. We've passed the username in here. We created it based upon this value. So we know that there should be a file that's here with the same name. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and just parse this data. And we do have to do a little funky expression here. It always gets removed, but I did have to go ahead and go base64 to string and then include the file contents itself um, as part of this expression to pull the data out, which will then line up with the file that I had just showed you here with this particular set of data. Then we're gonna just see if this was successful or not. And if it was success, we'll include the username. In the event we have a failure, we will include the error message and then we'll go ahead and return that data back to the chatbot itself. Now, I also have a try catch here. So in the event that one of these steps fail, we will return that message back and that will be just an indicator back to the chat bot that this has failed so display the correct message there. So hopefully that explains it, how you go ahead and call PowerShell and some of the capabilities you do have with the string manipulations and some of the actions inside of Win Automation. As I mentioned, this was part one of a, a two-part series. We will do something similar uh, in the next video, but we're gonna go ahead and disable the user, which is a pos a popular use case as well. You might have a situation where a you know someone leaves the organization and you need to go ahead and disable their account. So that concludes this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're not following me on Twitter, I would encourage you to do so at Weirzy. You're obviously on my YouTube channel, so I appreciate that. But if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and, and hit that subscribe button just to avoid missing future content. And I would love to see a like or comment if you did enjoy this content. With all that said, thanks again, and we'll see you soon. Take care.